Welcome and thank you for joining me for this installment of You Don't Need a Business Plan to Secure a Financing Solution for Your Business, brought to you by Constructum Online Learning. In this installment, I will look at principle number six, your dashboard. I've been driving for over 30 years. Needless to say, I'm very familiar with all the controls of my vehicle and can without much effort interpret the information I see on the vehicle's dashboard. What goes on beneath the vehicle's bonnet is another matter altogether. I have some inkling about the workings of the internal combustion engine and some idea of how a vehicle's drivetrain operates, but that is about as far as my understanding of the mechanics of a vehicle goes. I don't need to understand the mechanics of my vehicle to operate the vehicle. I believe that I'm a good driver, despite my lack of knowledge regarding the mechanics of a motor vehicle. The financial statements of your business are like the dashboard of a vehicle, your business. For you to successfully drive this machine, you must be able to interpret the information that your dashboard, the financial statements, gives you. You don't need to be a bookkeeper or accountant. You don't need to know how to keep the books. But you do need to know what your financial statements say about your business. This series is all about helping you to prepare an application for some type of business finance. To successfully secure a financing solution for your business, you must answer the four questions. See principle number three. But how do you substantiate your answers? You do so by way of your financial statements. You need a basic understanding of the results contained in your financial statements and an awareness of how external parties, including prospective financiers, will interpret those results. The main financial statements consists of a balance sheet, income and expenses statement, and a cash flow statement. For certain types of finance applications, financiers will also be interested in a cash flow forecast and a debtor's book age analysis. Financiers apply three types of metrics when reviewing your financial statements. Solvency, liquidity and profitability. Solvency is about the relationship between assets and liabilities. Liquidity relates to cash flow. Cash flow is like the lubricating oil of your business. The first measure of a business's success is its ability to make a profit. Successful business owners use profits to reinvest in business assets, to grow the capacity of the business and to create shareholder value. A business is solvent, a going concern, when the value of its assets exceeds the value of its liabilities. In fact, a business may not continue to operate if it is insolvent, that is, when its assets are worth less than its liabilities. Assets may be categorized into two groups, current assets and non-current assets. Current assets are assets that may be converted into cash within the current financial year and include things like cash and cash deposits, short-term investments and outstanding debt from debtors. Non-current assets are assets that may not be converted into cash within the current financial year and may include plant and equipment, vehicles, property and long-term investments. Likewise, liabilities are categorized into two groups. Current liabilities are liabilities that must be paid in the current financial year and may include things such as a bank overdraft, short-term loan or outstanding debts to creditors. And non-current liabilities. These are liabilities that will not be paid in the current financial year. A long-term loan for asset finance or a commercial property finance are examples. The basic solvency ratio is 
assets over liabilities. A solvency ratio of 2 to 1 is usually regarded as acceptable. To understand the format of a balance sheet, you need to know the following formula. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Or put differently, equity equals assets minus liabilities. What is equity? Equity is the amount of money that would be returned to the shareholder if all the assets are liquidated and all the liabilities are paid off. Assets, liabilities and equity together make up the balance sheet. Very importantly for the purposes of our conversation, what do financiers look for in the balance sheet? Three things. Is the business solvent? A business is solvent when the value of its assets exceed its liabilities. A ratio of 2 to 1 is usually regarded as acceptable. Two, does the business have sufficient liquidity? Can the business meet its short-term obligations, its current liabilities, from its current assets? And to what extent? Current assets over current liabilities. And three, how effectively does the business use its assets to create value? Shareholder value or equity equals assets minus liabilities. There are two main drivers of value. One, retained earnings. At the end of the financial year, the income and expenses statement will reflect a profit or loss. We will look at the format of the income and expense statement next. A business may distribute its profits to its shareholders by way of a dividend. That money leaves the business and are not used to create further value for its shareholders. Alternatively, the business can retain some of its profits as retained earnings. Retained earnings may be used by the business as working capital with an eye on expanding the business's operations or may be invested in long-term assets. 2. Asset growth. By investing in appreciating assets, that is non-current assets, the value of total assets increases and in turn creates shareholder value. Some may argue that the main objective of a business is to make a profit. I maintain that profit is a means to an end. The real end is to create a business that becomes an asset of value. Value for its shareholders, value for its owners, but that is a subject for another series. How do you calculate profit or loss for a business? For this you need an income and expenses statement, sometimes also referred to as the profit and loss statement. Start with revenue. Revenue is income from sales. Deduct cost of sales. This refers to those expenses that are directly related to sales activities. You buy stock to sell. You have procurement costs to get the stock to your warehouse. Salespeople commissions on sales made. These are all expenses directly related to sales. Deduct cost of sales from sales revenue and you get gross profit. A business can calculate its gross profit margin from this figure. Deduct from this your operational expenses, which are those expenses the business incurs that are not directly related to sales activities. Even if a business makes no sales, it still must pay the landlord rent, it must pay its utility bill and salaries. These are all examples of operational expenses or costs. That then gives you operational income, which is income from business activities. Deduct from operational income, non-operating income and expenses, which is income and expenses not related to your business activities, such as interest income, 
investment income, interest expenses, depreciation or any other type of non-operating income or expense. And that then gives you your profit or loss for the period. Include all of these items in this format and you have an income and expenses statement. A very important distinction to make at this point is between profit and cash on hand. Profit as reflected in the income and expenses statement is not the same thing as cash on hand. To understand how well the business manages its cash flow, you need to turn to the cash flow statement. But before we go to the cash flow statement, let us consider what are financiers looking for when reviewing an income and expenses statement. Firstly, profits. Obviously, financiers want to see a business that makes a profit and wants to see profits growing year on year. In my experience, financiers are more concerned with cash flow than profits, but more on that in a minute. Gross profit margin. For any retail or wholesale type of business where stock is purchased and sold to customers, the gross profit margin is important. The gross profit margin speaks to the viability of the trade and is calculated in the following way. Revenue minus cost of sales over cost of sales. A gross profit margin of no less than 30% is usually acceptable to financiers. Financiers want to understand the risks associated with a particular type of trade that the business engages in. For instance, an importer of goods must contend with the volatility of the local currency. The importer buys stock with the local currency, but the price of the consignment is often quoted in a foreign currency like the US dollar. If the local currency suddenly depreciates, this may result in a sharp increase in the cost of purchasing stock in the local currency to the extent that the trade is no longer financially viable. To mitigate this risk, importers often buy forward cover from their bank. You can think of forward cover as a type of insurance against adverse currency fluctuations. Conversely, unexpected decreases in sales revenue may be the consequence of a sudden increase in the value of the local currency for an exporter of products. Do you have sufficient fat in the trade, profit margin, to absorb unexpected increases in the cost of sales? What are the risks associated with your business's trading activities? And how do you mitigate these risks? Cost of debt. Using debt finance effectively can facilitate profitable trade but over-indebtedness may result in business failure. The price of money, see principle 4, is the interest the business pays on debt. Interest expenses is reflected under non-operating expenses in the income and expenses statement. Financiers will rightly consider the effect of interest rate rises on the profitability of the business. If the interest rate rises by 1, 2 or 3 percent, what will be the effect on the profitability of the business? To assess liquidity, financiers will review the business's cash flow statement. The format of a cash flow statement includes many of the features of the income and expenses statement with a few key differences. The income and expenses statement is all about profit or loss, whereas the cash flow statement is about the cash position of the business. The cash flow statement start and ends with cash reserves. Cash reserves, opening balance. How much cash 
the business has at the beginning of the period. Cash reserves, closing balance, how much cash the business has at the end of the period. Cash flows into the business and out of the business under three main headings. Business operations, investing activities and financing activities. Business operations relates to trading activities. Revenue in this case is cash actually received from sales. Did you pick up on the emphasis actually received? Why is this important? The cash flow statement deals with the actual flow of money. To understand, let us consider Tabang's medical consumables. In April, Tabang procures stock from suppliers who demand upfront payment before releasing the consignment. Tabang pays the supplier in April. This cash outflow is reflected in the cash flow statement in April. In May, 30 days later, the stock arrives at the bank's warehouse. In the meantime, the bank visits prospective customers and conclude sales. When the stock arrives, the bank prepares the order and delivers to the customer in May. But the customer demand payment terms of 30 days. The bank will only receive payment in June. But how is this trade reflected in the financial statements? The income and expenses statement will reflect the value of the sale when Tabang raises an invoice for his customer, that is in May, whereas the cash inflow will only reflect 30 days later, that is in June, in the cash flow statement when Tabang collects payment from the customer. Deduct from this the cost of sales, that is cash leaving the business to buy stock, pay for procurement costs and salespeople commission, and you get gross income. Deduct from that operational expenses as listed before when we looked at the income and expenses statement and you arrive at operational income. Next we look at investing activities. Cash flows out when the business invests in capital equipment, make a long-term investment or buys another business. Cash flows in when the business sell capital equipment like a vehicle, machinery or property, divests from a long-term investment or receives investment income. Lastly, we look at financing activities. Cash flow from and to investors and financiers. These may include dividends to shareholders, a share buyback when a business buys back its shares from its investors. This often relates to mezzanine finance, which is not a topic for this series. Debt capital repayment when you pay off the loan. The interest portion of the repayment reflect under operational expenses. Debt capital received. When a business secures a loan and the financier deposits the capital into the bank account of the business. And there you have the format of a cash flow statement. What do financiers look for in the cash flow statement? The cash flow statement should always be presented on a month to month basis. What you want to show to financiers is your competence at managing the trade cycle and control over expenses. In the example of the bank's medical consumables, the duration of the trade amounted to 60 days. Money left the business when the bank paid the suppliers and only returned to the business at the end of the 30 day payment term of the customer. Your competency as a business manager is demonstrated in the cash flow statement. Are you able to retain and deploy cash reserves to facilitate trade effectively? Is your business subject to some type of seasonality? How do you manage the resultant inconsistency in sales? I had a client in the ice cream business. 
During the warm summer months, he makes a killing, but suffer during the cold days of winter. Is your business subject to some type of seasonality? Do you build reserves during good times to sustain you during lean times? Let's just summarize for a moment. Financiers assess the viability of extending a loan to your business based on three metrics, namely solvency, liquidity, and profitability. Based on a review of your financial statements, including your balance sheet, income and expenses statement, and cash flow statement. In conversations with accountants, I have found that entrepreneurs neglect the use of the cash flow statement as a tool to manage trade, which is ironic because for financiers, cash flow as reflected in the cash flow statement is perhaps the most important consideration. Good use of the cash flow statement allows you to assess the viability of securing a financing solution for your business by way of a cash flow forecast over at least six months. A cash flow forecast adopts the same format as the cash flow statement, but it is based on a set of forecasted figures. The idea is to use the cash flow forecast to demonstrate how securing the specific finance solution you're aiming for will result in positive outcomes for your business. A cash flow forecast based on comprehensive financial statements supported by bank account statements is a great way of persuading a financier to approve your loan application. The last financial statement that I will consider in this series is the debtors book age analysis. The bank's medical consumables procure stock from suppliers and sell the stock to customers who demand payment terms of 30 days. These customers to whom Tabanga sold the stock are his debtors. Debtors are current assets in the balance sheet, since the expectation is that this asset will be converted into cash over the short term, in this case 30 days. The debtors book age analysis reflect the value of the outstanding debtors book and shows how effectively the bank collect payment from debtors. The debtors book age analysis will also give financiers insight into how diversified the bank's customer base is. To what extent is the bank's business dependent on one or more large customer? The financial statements of your business is like the dashboard in your car. In place of a speedometer and rev counter, you have three financial metrics that reflect the health of your business, namely solvency, liquidity, and profitability. As a competent business manager, you must assess the viability of utilizing some type of debt solution prior to approaching financiers. Put yourselves in the shoes of the financier when you look at your own financial statements. Developing the skills of interpreting the financial results reflected in your financial statements is a key prerequisite for successfully managing your business and will aid your attempts at securing a debt finance solution for your business. Thank you for listening. I trust you found the content informative. For more videos like this, please visit the Constructum online learning channel on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. Good luck with your business.